Hey, welcome back to Zombie Tactics today. I'm kind of rebooting a series today. Uh, I'm kind of getting back to doing some of my series. You may have noticed that I started up doing the Ammo Can of Worms series uh, recently. More on that soon. I'm rebooting a series today that I've had that up to now has been called Food Prep for the Lazy, Late, and Cheap. Uh, I'm rebranding it and rebooting it as simply Prepping for the Lazy, Late, and Cheap because uh, we're going to cover more topics than just food prep. And on top of that, I'm going to avoid the whole part one, part two, part three thing. They're just going to be individual installments on their own. Today I want to introduce to you a concept uh, that I call the, um, the emergency coin jar. And that's a concept. It's not literally a coin jar. And it, it's based upon a couple of ideas. One of them is, is that I've, I've noticed that a strong tendency uh, that people have is if they care about something at all, that they do get tend, they tend to sort of get lost in making lists of things they're going to get, and they they're constantly redoing that list and figuring out what's the best thing, what's the best deal, what's the best value, you know, and, and, and that list is always changing. Oh, I'm going to get this rifle, and I've got that figured out, so I'm saving my money for that rifle now. And then along the way, well, no, I'm going to change that to a different rifle. It's a more expensive one now, or it's a less expensive one, and they can never quite make up their mind. Uh, and the same thing with every other piece of equipment that you talk about. Um, when you make those lists, things tend to get more and more expensive all the time, too, because you keep finding out new things you want to add on, or you know, all of a sudden that, that uh, sort of bargain AR-15, like the one I've got, is not good enough for you. Oh, you need the $1,000 one, or you need the $1,500 one. Ooh, you, need the, you, know, you now need the mid-length with the tactical rail on it, and the light, and the, the laser. And all of a sudden, you find yourself having not really done anything in the way of preparing. It's, it's, a, it's part of the idea of making the, the, uh, the perfect the enemy of the good. It's like you just need good stuff. You don't need perfect stuff. Now, I'm a big fan of buying top quality gear, but I'm also a big fan of not shooting yourself in the foot and not doing anything because you're always waiting to do you know some grand aha perfect thing out there. It's kind of like you know, somebody who's always waiting for the perfect husband or the perfect wife and they're passing by perfectly good men and women that would be wonderful life partners because always there's like some little picky thing that's wrong with them. So we don't want to do that. We want to prep. We want to prep uh, not by buying a whole bunch of stuff at once or having the perfect stuff and, and failing to act if we can't always do the perfect thing. We want to make this kind of a, even a small lifestyle change that over time leaves us in a better position to be able to survive hard times, difficult situations, bad people, call it what you will. So here's the idea of the emergency or the prepper coin jar. Now, I know you've either done this or you've had friends that do this where they find out that like, you know, every day at the end of the day if they pay cash for something, they've got some coins in their pocket. And so they've got a jar or a a bowl or something that they throw that change in. And they come back a few months later and they look in that bowl or that jar of change and all of a sudden, you know, they were just throwing stuff that they wouldn't even miss. Wouldn't even miss that change at all. They didn't, it didn't even enter into their consciousness. Come back a few weeks, a few months later, and all of a sudden they got 50 bucks, or they got 100 bucks, or maybe even more if it's, a, if it's a big jar. And now they got something they can actually do something with, and it really didn't, at least psychologically, cost them anything to amass all of that money. Well, we want to apply the same concept to prepping on the lazy, late, and cheap, like this. We want to get ourselves a container of some kind. It doesn't matter what the container is, so don't get caught up in that. Uh, ideally, you wouldn't even go out and buy this container. Uh, you don't go out and have to buy, here again, it doesn't have to be a food quality container. It doesn't have to be made out of a special pl pl plastic or anything like that. What am I using? I'm using an old container from cat litter because I've got cats. It's a plastic container and now that there's no more cat litter in it, cat litter in it it's got a good tight fitting lid on it. It's not airtight. It doesn't need to be for my purposes. Okay, and I'm going to use that as my preparedness coin jar, sort of. Conceptually, it's the same thing. So what do I do with that? Well, you know, whether this is kitty litter or it's a, something that uh, laundry detergent came in or whatever, we don't care as long as it's a fairly sturdy plastic container that we can throw stuff in. Well, we're going along one day and we see, I don't know, one of these little toothbrush things in the supermarket. And they're like a dollar in the little sample section or something. And we just get a wild, bleh, dropped it. And we just get a wild hair and we go, well, you know what? That'd be useful. 
if things were if things were bad, that fits in your pocket or whatever, I'll spend 50 cents. It goes in the preparedness uh, coin coin bucket or whatever you want to call it. We're running along one day and we say, oh hey, I'm looking at medical gear on Amazon and I noticed that this thing's only five bucks. Uh, I got five bucks. Boom. Now we've got a, a TK4 tourniquet and it goes in there. Oh, I was at a swap meet and somebody was selling these little uh, ferrocium fire rods with the magnesium thing on it for a couple bucks. Those are usually five bucks. So ah, two bucks, five bucks, whatever. It goes in the bucket. I don't worry about whether this is something that I do once a month, once a week, whatever. I'm looking at coupons. I see something on sale. Oh, wait, Big Five's got a sale on this knife, a CRKT, uh, you know, Stiff Kiss. Pretty good little knife, right? Like 10 bucks or less, 9 bucks, I think this was. Same thing with this one. Um, you know, the M Tech, I think I've shown some of these in previous videos before, even. But you know, just boom, just as we're going along, the process of our ordinary life. We're not trying to say, ooh, that's the best knife in the world. It's just a good, useful knife at a great price. Lighter fluid for Zippos, it's like three bucks. What the heck? One day you're in the supermarket, you just get a wild hair to get it goes in the bucket. Um, I don't even know where this came from. Actually, I do know where it came from. There's like a sale on these Dorsey lights. They were like on closeout at Target, and they were like five bucks a piece. So I picked up a couple of them. They're good. They're bright. They're headlamps. Boom. Go to the bucket. Uh, again, I don't even know where this came from. That's a notebook. It was from some convention or something. Microsoft. Got a pencil attached to it. It goes in the bucket. NRA, a few years ago, I know I showed this one in a video before, um, probably the zombie kit on the cheap video or something. It's a, it's a inexpensive, not a, particularly a high quality multi-tool, but it will, it will, it will work, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll function. It's not as good as a, a Gerber or a, or a Leatherman for sure, but it's something, and this was essentially free. It even came with a little bit driver set on the back of it here. So that goes in the bucket too. And what we'll find is if we do that, and we're careful to not just buy absolute, you know, crap that's of no use at all, if we just as we're going along the ordinary process of our life, we just say, hey, here's a special on Band-Aids. I'll buy a box of Band-Aids. Boom. Or some gauze. Boom. Every once in a while, you just do that and you throw it in the bucket. Oh, look, I'm traipsing down the aisle at Walmart one day and here's the little sample section and they've got a, a little... Uh, package of hand sanitizer or something like that, or even a little thing of shampoo. Boom, it goes in the bucket. And we'll come back in a few months and we'll say, I've got a bucket full of stuff here. And if we've made reasonably good decisions, all of this stuff will be useful. And you might say, well, that doesn't really sound like prepping to me. It sounds like a random collection of crap. Well, it might, but I guarantee you, if you took a look at any of these items under difficult circumstances, if you didn't have them or something like them, and you needed them, a flashlight, a knife, a tourniquet, a toothbrush for basic hygiene, lighter fluid, you know, all of this stuff is a veritable treasure to somebody who needs it in a difficult situation when they don't have it. So now you've got a bucket full of useful stuff. And what do you do? Maybe you take it all out, make a list of what's in that bucket, put it on the top of it, put the lid on that, and put it away. And then what do you do? You get another bucket, just like it, or different, it doesn't matter, and you fill that bucket up. And once you get about three buckets going, you'll be able to open up those buckets and you'll be able to start saying, whoa, wait a minute, I'm seeing categories starting here. I've got knives and sharp things and tools here. Oh, great. I, that's a category. I got medical stuff here. I got personal hygiene things here. I've got, you know, all these little categories starting. What you can do is you can recategorize these buckets then. Don't worry about doing it now because you'll go crazy trying to get enough buckets together and making these categories. Wait till you got a few of them full and then you can start saying, okay, here's a bucket full of knives. Here's a bucket full of this. Here's a bucket full of that. And what you can start then doing is you can say, all right, I'm going to do something like, I'll look for an inexpensive a little pouch on closeout, and now I'm going to make a little pouch that's a little survival kit. Boom. Oh, there's one for me. Boom. There's one for my wife. Boom. There's one for my kids. You can approach this a lot of, a lot of different ways, but the point is, you're getting yourself in the habit 
of doing something rather than doing nothing. And that's about half the battle if you want to get involved in any kind of prepping at all. Prepping is not really about you go out and you buy a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, I buy a year's supply of food. Oh, I buy all these, you know, $5,000 worth of, of guns and ammo and this, that, and the other thing. Oh, now I'm going to go buy, you know, all these big projects that you will never, ever complete. Whatever your budget is, whatever your income is, wherever you are at in the socioeconomic stratus, strata, <laughs> whether you live in a big city, a small town, an apartment, a house, a shack in the middle of nowhere, this is something that you can begin doing today at whatever income level you want to do it at. And it, I think it's something that you personally ought to start doing. Use, call it what you want, the cookie jar, the coin jar, the SHTF prep bucket, <laughs> a random prep bucket, and work that into your prepping plans. And it's one way you can start doing something so that you are some degree better prepared than the next person should difficult situations and, and difficult scenarios arise. Just a concept for the lazy, late, and cheap. Get started. Do something today. Get a bucket. Put something in it this week. And then keep doing that every week, every month, whatever works for you at whatever level of money you can, um, you can afford, whatever kind of money you wouldn't necessarily miss. That's Zombie Tactics today. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.